Hey girl, hey, welcome to my channel, Redefining a Woman's Worth, where we are walking in our true worth unapolo unapologetically, right? We are unapologetically who we are, who God created us to be. We're walking in our divine purpose and we are living out our true worth, amen? So that is what we do here on this channel. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for all my new subscribers. Welcome to this community. Also, I do have a podcast called Purity After Promiscuity. You can go check that out on Spotify. Google Podcast, um, CastBox, and a few other um, platforms. So um, if you want to support um, all of what this ministry does, I do have a podcast, um, which I also do talk a lot or release a lot about what the Lord has spoken to me or what I believe the Lord, you know, is telling me you know, to encourage you all or, you know, just some tools and tips, you know, along this journey that I have acquired um, through experience. So please go and check out the Purity After Promise Cutie podcast, but also like, share, comment on this platform here. Um, I'm just getting started. I really had to overcome the hesitation or the stagnation uh, and complacency, right? Because I just kind of didn't want to do it. Um, that's just me like this in this season. I didn't want to I just feel like too many people are on YouTube Calling themselves this or that right giving the word of the Lord um, All of the things and so the last thing I wanted to do was to Get on YouTube right and Look as though I am like kind of following suit However, when you know that God is calling you to do something It don't matter if everybody in the world is doing it God is so, he's so individualistic, right? That he'll give you your own voice, right? He'll give you a voice to, that he's going to use to reach the people he's called to you. So it's not a competition. It's not about trying to take, um, compete with someone else's, you know, number of subscribers or, you know, how, how they particular, you know, do videos or, you know, release their words or whatever. It's about doing what God told you to do, how he told you to do it. And that's what I had to receive. I had to get out of myself and quit looking at everybody else and what I think and just be obedient because it is such a blessing. Your blessing is in your obedience, right? Your blessing is in your obedience. And I just want to say that. I don't know. I hope that somebody catch that. Your blessing is in obedience. Yes, it may be other people that's doing what God called you to do. Or maybe there is nobody. Maybe you haven't done it because you feel like you don't have no examples, right? You feel like you don't have no um no, nobody else that has come before you that you can kind of look at and pattern after because God has called you to pioneer. He's called you to trailblaze. And so you still are somebody that just need to get comfortable being uncomfortable and being different and being the one who is going to be the one that everybody's going to look to that come behind you because God does. He, he works in both lanes. And so just be obedient. Don't be afraid to step out and just know that as long as you stay, um, at the feet of the Lord, as long as you continue to acknowledge him in all your ways, he's going to direct your path. He'll tell you what to do and how to do it. In the same way he told Moses how to construct the temple, he gave them very, he gave them very, very, very specific details on how to um, build the temple all the way down to the specs, right? Um, down to, to the, to the type of um, fibers and threads and the colors and the type of different, um, uh, materials, right? He he gave them everything and he told them exactly what to do. The same with Noah, right? He told, he gave Noah the specs of how big, how wide, you know, what would, he told him everything he needed in order to build what he was calling him to build. And see, at like Noah and like Moses, no, no one had ever built a temple. Yeah, I'm in the car. So, you know, somebody's walking down the street. So ignore that. Uh, but nobody had built a temple. Nobody had built an ark, but they still trusted God enough and they continued to lean on God and depend on God because they had nobody to pattern after, right? They only got their, they got all of their information from the father. So whatever God is calling you to do, whether it's something that other people are doing or it's something, excuse me, that um, nobody else has done. Just continue to acknowledge him. Keep your ear to heaven, right? Continue to seek him daily, right? He will download to you the instructions on how he, who he, how he wants you to do it, right? And you will find that you'll, you'll be able to do it even though you don't feel like you can. Like it, me personally, it was like, I'm like, I don't think I can get on here. And even though the, I do it on my podcast, but it's like, I don't do my, I don't record my podcast live, right? 
I don't record video podcasts. I have here and there, but normally I just do it audio. So it's different. I ain't looking at myself, you know, looking like I'm talking to myself or knowing that I'm about to release this to anybody who can see it. Even though with the podcast, anybody can listen to it. It's like, but there's just something in my mind, but y'all don't see me, you know? And, and so it's just a different thing. And so, you know, but at the end of the day, God's will be done. We want to be obedient as women of God, as women who are redefining our worth. We want to be radically obedient to whatever God tell us because God knows all things. He knows what we need. He knows what it is we need to do. He knows how we need to do it. He knows everything everything that we need is in him is in jesus so you just want to continue to seek him for everything in your life especially anything he's calling you to do right he will give you the instruction so yeah um but yeah so just um this video i just really wanted to come on here and do girl talk i know somebody might be thinking like this girl come on here all the time she don't she always looking with a hat on and stuff and i'm like you know lord why do it seem like most of the times where I really am thinking like, hmm, maybe I should do, you know, I feel like I should do a video. I feel like I should, you know, um, encourage my sisters in Christ. It's always when I'm in relaxed mode. Like I didn't got myself all the way relaxed. I didn't took off, you know, what I had on for the day, you know, and just kind of been chilling out. But, you know, at the end of the day, you have to feel comfortable in your own skin. Like, yes, I, I get dressed up all the time. Yes, normally when I'm going out public, I normally have everything going on you know i have my face you know got a little makeup that i wear i don't wear much but i just wear a little bit you know i might have a wig on or i might have my hair out you know i'm gonna have my clothes on i'm always look good because i'm representing my father right i'm representing me but i'm also representing my father so i'm never like i had to tell some of the ladies at one of our um women's meetings i was like listen as i'm going through so much in life right now i'm going through the storm the trial the fire the valley of the shadow of death all right now right um and yet and still i was like i cannot look like what i go through because i cannot embarrass my husband god is my husband he is my source and he is my strength even though i may feel like he's not there in the way that i want him to be there or he's not giving me or answering the prayers in the way that i want him to answer them i still know he, i'm married to him i'm his bride right once i receive jesus christ i have now you know become the bride of christ as we all are so i make sure that i represent him well and represent myself well no matter what i'm going through so yes i'm going to keep myself up but i am very comfortable in my relaxed mode i'm very comfortable with no makeup i'm very comfortable with a hat on with my little twist under this hat i i do I sometimes I go out and just twist, like just a two twist, you know, each side, like braids or whatever. And I might do my, like, like my edges a little bit and I'll go out like that because when you are healed and you are free and you're secure, you know that makeup doesn't make you. Weave don't make you, a wig don't make you, lashes don't make you, nails don't make you, all of these external things don't make you. You are who God says you are, right? You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You're the head and not the tail. You're beautiful just the way God created you. Like, period. He ain't made no trash. Everything he made was good. He made mankind. He said it's very good. So when you get to that place, you can be like, well, it is what it is. <laughs> and that's, you know, even though sometimes I do think like, dang, I don't want to always be on here looking like this. I'm so comfortable. It's like, you know, if they going to judge me or if they going to receive whatever I, you're speaking through me on the pretenses of my appearance or what I what I got on if that is what they're going to measure my ability to hear God then they don't need to be on here no way because if that's what you do if you look at somebody and you think oh because they're beautiful you think oh because they always look good you think oh because they look like they you know wealthy and all whatever the case may be and you assume that God is speaking through them you really need to go back and you need to really get into the face of the Lord. You need to seek Holy Spirit. You need to fast and pray and you need to read your Bible because God is not vain and he's no respecter of persons. God will use whoever. He will use someone who is homeless on the street and he will minister mightily through them. He uses the foolish things to confound the wise. So don't ever look at the outer appearance. That's what he told Samuel when Samuel went to anoint the next king and he was going through Jesse's sons and he went through all seven sons and he started with Eliab and you know Benadab and he went all the way down and he he just assumed the first one because of how he looked his appearance he assumed he was the one he 
was like, yeah, he's tall. He has broad shoulders. He's handsome. Surely he has to be the one. And God said no. And it's interesting because when you look at the description of Jesse's oldest son and the description of Saul, it was very similar. So for Samuel, he assumed that the next God's next choice or God's next move was going to come through similar of what he did the first time and god not like that he said i'll do a new thing and it springs forth suddenly in isaiah 43 and 19 so you always got to be prepared that's why you got to have your ear to heaven you got to see god daily because you don't know how he gonna come he will switch it up switch it up on you and he did with david like in so much so that the father wasn't even gonna consider david and samuel had to be like is it somebody else because listen i hear god and i know god told me that the next king is here in your house and one of your sons. And so do you have another son you ain't telling me about? And I'm paraphrasing. And he like, yeah, you know, David, you know, but he's out there, you know, in the field with the sheep. And David ended up being the one, the one who was least likely, the one who wasn't even considered, the one who really, you know, was rejected. Because if you really do a study into David and his life, he really wasn't well received by his family, especially his brothers and stuff, because he of who his mother was, right? Because his father had an affair or, you know, or something to that effect, or his mother was more like a concubine or something. She was she wasn't respected. She wasn't a wife. And so David was, you know, kind of rejected. He wasn't his father, you know, accepted him because that's his son. But he really he still dealt with that rejection. He didn't feel that love. He wasn't widely received like the other brothers. And we see that because the father didn't even say go get David when he called all the other ones out first. So you got to know, like. God don't look at people's outer appearance. God will look at somebody and they could be totally jacked up on the outside. He'll begin to use them because they have a pure heart and they are someone that he can trust. And he'll begin to change their outer appearance. The next thing you know, you'll look at that person like, oh my goodness, what's happening to them? Because they starting to look, they starting to glow up. Because God ain't, he's not really interested in what your outer is. He's looking at your heart. He wants to know, like, is your heart pure? He wants to know, do you love him? Do you love his people? Can he trust you, right? That's what he's looking for. So don't look at people. Don't don't even look at a ministry. Don't look at a pastor. Don't look at nobody on YouTube or any other type of platform who claim or say they are a person of the Lord. I'm not saying they're not. But don't let the fact that it looks like that they have wealth or money or success or access or influence influence don't don't look at because you know every time the girl get on or the man get on they they done up to the nines and that's not that does not always signify the hand of god right the enemy uses people too the enemy gives gifts to people too and so you cannot be deceived to be so superficial and vain and shallow to think that somebody who don't look a certain way can't give a word of the lord and I don't know why I'm on that. And the Lord really is on that. I don't know what it is. So I don't know if some of you are having itchy ears and itchy eyes. And y'all are looking at people. Y'all listening and following people based on their appearance or what they are presenting. And you're not discerning the spirit. That is why we have give, we are given the gift of discerning of spirits. Because it is a, the ability to discern what's behind the thing in the natural. So what really, who is really behind that person? so what that they look like they so blessed do you know people do all kind of things that's why the bible tell us it's the love of money is the root of all evil you don't know what that person is doing you don't know what type of lifestyle that person is living just because they say this or that or just because they said god gave it to me god bless me that don't mean that doesn't mean it's true that's why you should test the spirit of every man to see whether it's of God. That is biblical. And even do that to me because don't blindly follow nobody. The Bible talks about being blind led by the blind. Like don't blindly follow anybody because you just don't know. And you may wonder why every word that you think or you feel resonate with you and you receive it and you do everything you know to do to, to agree with that word but you don't see anything or it feel like your life is going opposite of what you believe God is saying to you. A lot of times it's because of who you're watching or who you connected to because you create covenants with people when you give your ear to them because your ear gates and eye gates are the gateways to your soul. And we know the Bible tells us to guard our heart with all diligence for out of it flows the issues of life, right? So you got to guard your heart, meaning you can't open yourself up to 
in just anybody on any platform or in, in even in a ministry like in a church you want to pray and seek the lord is this where you want me to go lord is this the ministry you want me to connect to is this the leadership you want me to be under like you want to see god because you don't know what's really behind these things or these peoples or these ministries out of her story after story and i have experiences where i have been a part of ministries and on the onset it looked like and let me say this they were anointed they were they were called but what the enemy loves to do and we don't glorify the enemy he always seeks to go through the head or through the power so when you have a calling to leadership and when you have a calling like an apostolic calling or as a pastor a shepherd a teacher a preacher a prophet whatever when you are called to a high place the enemy is going to seek to try to indoctrinate you or to influence you. That's how we see so many fall. That's why we see so many of these pastors and preachers and teachers and all these people who have been in these major positions. You know, we see scandals and we hear all kind of things come out. And they probably start off well, right? They probably start off righteous. And then somewhere along the way, the enemy was able to come in and they did not, you know, resist him. And then he was able to influence them. So that's why it just is so important for you to constantly, you know, be in tune with the spirit, with Holy Spirit to be led to everything to everyone even to videos or even you know people's platforms on social media be led and it's okay if you just stumble across it or it come up in your feed and you click on it but even you know be sometimes before you fin really play it ask the lord like lord should i watch this video should i watch this person is this person of you is this is or is this just somebody you want me to be connected to because he'll let you know it's not always because a person is bad Sometimes God is just doesn't want you to connect with that person and that's okay. So I really don't know why I got on that, but I I got on it. Okay. Um <laughs> Yeah, so I, I really hope that someone receives that and just take it back to the Lord, you know. And even if you feel like you've started following someone and listening to someone and you feel like the Lord is revealing to you that that person wasn't sent from him or they're not right. You just go to him and you ask for forgiveness. You repent. You break the covenants. You break the agreements, the soul ties. You renounce and you plead the blood and you carry on, right? Don't don't let the enemy, you know, trick you and swindle you to thinking, oh, you know, it, it is something, you know, that, you know, you're never going to be able to recover from or you're not going to be able to you'll forfeit all the blessings or, you know, that you just, you know, going to be, you know, in this, you know, tormented or whatever the case may be. No like no the blood is more powerful but you do want to make sure if that is you you want to quickly get out of agreement with any anything and anyone that ain't from god period point blank i get out of agreement with people quick the lord revealed to me somebody i don't care who they is i don't care what mega church they go to or or lead i don't care what international ministry they got i don't care how well known they are i don't care who what who what 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 the moment holy spirit tell me something about somebody and that they not of him or that he don't want me to connect with them I'm cutting it off immediately. I'm praying. I'm coming out of agreement. If I got to fast, whatever I got to do, I'm cutting that thing off. I'm severing. I'm soul ties. I'm sever. You know, I'm I'm annulling all kind of you know covenants, whatever it is, because it's not worth my salvation. It's not worth my destiny, my blessings. It's not worth my purpose. It's not worth anything. Like having a following somebody or listening to somebody's word or voice or message or whatever. It's not worth you know, me forfeiting all that God has for me. And I hope that you feel the same. And because that's kind of what is at risk, right? When you connect with the wrong person, what's at risk is everything. So I don't know who that's for, but whoever's for, I hope you receive it. I'm sure it's for me too. Like I said, I, I do do that. And I have recently just done that the other week um, with someone that I was listening to. Um, and, you know, some just felt off a little bit. And that's another thing, like pay attention to that. I know sometimes we always are looking for God to speak in these grandiose ways, right? We're thinking like he's going to, you know, give us some kind of huge sign. But sometimes it's really just that checking your spirit like, hmm, something off. Something off here, something not right. That person, I don't know, some just don't sit right. Some don't feel right. Just go trust that. And I, I always say that I'd rather err on the side of caution 
because if that person, if it ain't nothing, I'd rather that be the case because I don't lose nothing. But if it is something, I'd rather go ahead and trust the Lord in the onset because I don't got time to be entangled with some mess, right? Um, Because that can be very destructive to your life. And it can, depending on how, how, how long it take you to come out, you can be in lost time. But God is a redeemer, right? He's a redeemer of time. But you will be now trying, you'll be catching up of things that the Lord was trying to re release to you or, you know, reveal to you in that moment, you know, that you was in that, um, in that situation. So, you know, just be mindful. We are living in the days where deception is high. The um, spirit of deception is really out here. And again, you, when you know the word says that the Antichrist will be able to, you know, the Antichrist spirit will be able to deceive even the you know, nearly deceive even the elect, right? And the elect is those that are way, you know, up there. And so you got to know that means that, that he comes as an angel of light and in, in, in many ways, not just in people. It could be in an opportunity. You know, it could be in a place. It, it could just be in the wrong decision. So, you know, it's many ways that the enemy seeks to come in. But when we keep our eyes on Jesus, when we continue to seek the Lord in all things, when we continue to, you know, just wait on God, then we are, we can be sure that, you know, the Lord is going to, you know, keep us and protect us and we'll be in, in, you know, on the right path and we don't have to worry about these things. But, you know, again, it's not to glorify the enemy. We just got to be aware we have an adversary and he wants to still kill and destroy. And even if he got to deceive, if he got to Look like God, pretend like God, sound like God. That's what he'll do. He'll go to any length to deceive the people of God because he has one agenda and that is to kill, steal, and destroy. And so don't let it be you because you don't want to receive that that relationship, that friendship, that that romantic relationship, that job, that coworker, that ministry, you know, that leader, that parent, whatever the Lord has been speaking to you to saying you need to leave you need to disconnect it reminds me just of the importance of abraham disconnected from his family his loved ones right and everything he knew right but his family for the most part especially his father tara he he was an idol worshiper you know he worshiped other gods right and so again sometimes the people closest to us because they don't receive Jesus Christ yet because they're blind right now or because they are practicing something else or they believe in some other God or they worship some other idols. The Lord might say, separate yourself. He may do, he may say that and don't, and don't be afraid to do so because anything God tell you to separate from, he will replace it. Like you may think it has to be that family member specifically or that in the same way but god will put someone in your life to fill that void and you you will receive that love you'll receive that support in the same way that you was with that person so don't be afraid to to trust god and separate from anyone and anything that he is calling you to separate from i've had to separate from a lot i've had to separate from friends from people from situations from ministries from romantic relationship all kind of things i've had to separate and then the onset it was kind of like why you know but i just trusted god and i did it and it's so crazy because just stuff has come out since i did that and since god was speaking to me and it was like wow i'm glad i obeyed because the lord knew and so i'm telling you what i know by experience if the lord is telling you to separate or to leave something or someone trust him because he sees what you don't see and he knows what you don't know so don't try to hold on to something because you think oh i love them or that person loved me or are we this or we that or we got this many years or they've always been there for me whatever you don't know you don't know what's coming down the line right and so just trust god excuse this car is gonna ride past kind of loud sorry um but just trust him because he knows all things and you know he's never gonna put you in a situation to harm you his thoughts toward you is for hope in the future so it's for good not for evil so that is not what i prepared to say but obviously that's what the lord wanted me to say and so that's what i'm saying um and before i cut this video off because i'm gonna try to cut it off at 30 minutes i want to say this do not take old things into your new season. It's so important. 
do not take old things into your new season. Whether it is a old mindset, whether it is a old behavior, an old pattern, whether it is just old things, material things, whether it's old relationships. I don't know what's happening. This car, for no reason, is just like racing itself down the street and just being obnoxious. Anyway. Yeah, I know y'all hear that. Hmm. But yes, do not, do not, do not be afraid of, to get rid of things. Don't be afraid to change your number, to change your email. Don't be afraid to move out your old place. Don't be afraid to get rid of old things, furniture, clothing, whatever. Don't be afraid to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Don't be afraid to let go of, you know, old ideologies or thought processes like i said patterns mindsets whatever it is don't take old things into your new season and i don't know because i didn't come out here really prepared to give um that word <laughs> um and i don't even have my bible in the car i have a bible in the car i always have my i have a car bible bible i keep in the car i always have the word with me everywhere i go i have my other bible somewhere back there However, I know it's in Matthew, I don't know, I want to say 22, but don't quote me, where it talks about putting the um, new wine in old wineskins, and it's saying you don't put new wine in old wineskins because the old wineskins will swell and they will burst. They can't contain that new wine, right? So yeah, it's the new wine in the old wineskins, I believe so. Go look it up. <laughs> Go look it up, Bible scholars, right? I'm going to tell you right now. I'm going to just really give it to you straight. It will be times where I will already have like the, the you know, the actual scripture to give you guys for you guys to go ahead and, um, you know, be able to go study that out. But a lot of times I won't because I don't feel like as a, I have a teaching grace and the way I teach is the way I think that God teaches me and that's through experience. So you have to learn to go find things in your Bible. I do my sons the same way when I have Bible study with them. I tell them if that I let them choose, you know, the book or, you know, what they, what we going to learn for the day and where, where it's located, I'll find it, you know, quick. Cause I'm, you know, I know, you know, I'm more familiar with the Bible, but I don't help them. I tell them, look in the front, look in the front of your Bible. You find the book of the Bible. Whatever the book it is, if we're, you know, if we're in, you know, Kings, you look for first Kings, second Kings, whatever one you look for it and you look at the page number and you go to it and you find it and you find the chapter because that's the only way they're going to learn how to navigate their Bible. So I, I may not always give you the exact scripture, but I will tell you exactly the reference and you're able to just go, um, you know, Google it, look it up. You may already know where it is. But I would say study that out um, about the new wine and old wineskins because it's so important when God is doing a new thing in your life. And a lot of us are in a new season and it don't look like it. It don't feel like it. I know for me, I am in the most uncomfortable place I ever imagined. I never imagined myself being in this place in this season of life. You couldn't have told me. I wouldn't have believed you. I, I never saw it coming. But that's why you got to know the mind of God. And, and and you just got to understand like the heart of God. Because we'll never know the mind of God. But the way God works, he doesn't always do things in what we think is linear. Like, right? Like, it's not always like straight. Sometimes it seems like God is like, you know, taking the scenic route. Or he's over here and over there. But it's just because God knows exactly what he's doing and how to get you where he needs you to be and to you you might think like well lord why you just ain't you know do this this and this and it may be a reason why you know i always think about how again how israel when he first brought them out of egypt they didn't go the straight shortest way they didn't they he took them around he took them around the it was a little more you know it took a little more time and it was a it was probably like a little more rough terrain or whatever but he understood that to go that way 
was going to get them where they needed to be but it was also going to avoid the warfare that was on the short route because he said they could not handle that they wasn't ready for that warfare and they would have got afraid they would have got full of fear and they would have ran back to egypt at if they would have encountered that warfare so sometimes god may be doing things and it seems um you know like he's doing things out of order or he's working backwards or you know he is chaotic and and it's like no god he knows exactly what he's doing he does all things decently and in order but to our mind what it should look like in his mind sometimes there's just a big gap and God still is going to get you to your destination. And you, a lot of us are in our new beginning. And again, it may not look like it. Don't feel like you can't tell me like, it takes the wisdom of God for me to be able to say that and mean it. Like, and not be just saying it just to say it, but to say like, I'm in my new beginning, right? Even though nothing about my current situation is saying new beginning, I'm in my new beginning. Why? Because I'm not in that old place that I used to be. That is how you know you're in your new beginning. It's not always because you everything has already worked out or all the blessings have already um you know you, you've walked in them or because the promise ain't you are already in a promise land or because you ain't already in the marriage or the relationship or because you ain't already get the you know the wealth or you know the position or the business or whatever it's not always that doesn't always signify the new beginning right that is the fruit of being in that new season and the new beginning but the new beginning starts when you're no longer in that old place right that place that you used to be in it could be physical for me it's physical it's also spiritual but um it's physical right i used to live in a old place and in that old place you know i knew it was time to leave i knew god was calling me to leave things started happening to where i had to leave you know but i was so comfortable right I was so comfortable, but it was so much going on in that place. Even though it looks like I had stability, even though it looked like I was, you know, comfortable, it was very, very chaotic. It was very chaotic. I was, you know, really getting just under a lot of warfare and it was just a lot going on. And I'm not in that place no more. I'm not in that physical location. I'm not under that pressure I was under being there. I'm not under that warfare that I was being there. I'm not dealing with all of the responsibilities, you know, because I had to think about it on my way um, back here just now, you know, because right now I'm staying with my mother and um, I was like, dang, you know, like I'm saving a lot of money, you know, because when you live on your own and even though you're used to it and you make it happen, you make it work, but I was paying a lot of money in rent, okay? And so when you think about rent, gas electric water um wi-fi um you know all of the things that come just the responsibility of the household that you're responsible for right i'm like yo i'm really saving a lot of money right now i'm saving some thousands <laughs> right now right so you know always look being able to find the good right and that's how you know something is god because even though you're not in the situation you want to be in it don't look the way you want to look i didn't want to be living with nobody it, it, and it's nothing against people right and yes i have my thoughts you know especially if i know someone isn't living you know a safe lifestyle or you know they may be believing other things or you know they may be open to other things or practicing other things yes i have my opinion about that but the the, the real you know truth about it is I just didn't want to be living with nobody. I had not had to live with nobody really since I moved out of my mother's house, which you're talking about like 20 years ago or more, really. I've been on my own. I've had my own. So to now not have my own and have to be living with other people, well, even if it is my mother, it was just not something I wanted to do. It could be pride. It could just be me being just, you know, hard-headed, stiff neck, whatever. But, excuse me, I just didn't want to. But for whatever reason, God allowed it. And now I had to look at it, like, because I've been looking at it as, like, something negative this whole time. I've been looking like, I just always was complaining and grumbling and mumbling and just didn't really have anything good to say and even you know when I would mention it it was never in, with like a positive you know attitude it was always like with this negative attitude 
And then I was speaking to one of the ladies that go to the church I, I attend. And, um, you know, I was telling her my situation and telling her now that I had to move in with my mom. And, you know, she's a lot older than me. You know, she's in her late 50s. And she was like, I live with my mom right now. She was like, you know, my thought was to move in with my mom to save money, you know, and stuff so I could get, you know, get get a house, you know, and then it just kind of dinged for me. And then I thought about another young lady who goes um, to the church I attend. And I remember last year before she got in her um, own place, she was living with her mother and she said she had moved back home, her and her child, um, because she wanted to save money. She wanted to buy a house. And then it got me to thinking, you know, all the times I may have watched like a show on HGTV or something or a show about people, you know, getting a home, buying a home or, you know, whatever. And a lot of times, you know, people well to do, you know, successful couples, married, you know, got careers, you know, choose to go back and live with their parent to save money or, you know, to prepare for them to buy their own house. And it's like, I was so in my head looking at it as such a negative and I was so focused on what I didn't want about it or the fact that I didn't want to be living with nobody and I really just want to have my own space and I like having my own space and you know just kind of like in my mind in my head just kind of in my feelings about it that I never looked at it like wow I'm saving money wow this is, could be an opportunity that I could really utilize to get further to get ahead right to accomplish some of these, um, you know, these goals and dreams that I have, instead of me looking at it like that, or maybe just me preparing for the next place, the next phase, I was so focused on grumbling and complaining because I didn't realize, like, girl, you in your new season, you in your new season, you're not in that old place. You're not dealing with that old that old drama. You're not, you know, you're you're in a new place, a new season. And yes, it may not be exactly where you want it. Listen, Israel had to make a lot of stops before they got to the promised land. You know what I mean? Like they didn't go straight from Egypt to Canaan. They had to go pitch pinch cap here, pitch cap there, be at the Mount Sinai, be at Mount, you know, uh, all these different places, right? They had to, you know, make stops along the way, and but with each stop, they were getting closer and closer to all to that promised land, to the land of Canaan. And when you're not in that old place, and again, it's not just physical; it can be spiritual. When you have matured spiritually, you have elevated spiritually, right? Your mind has been enlightened spiritually, right? When you when you know even emotionally emotionally or whatever it could just it doesn't have to be a physical thing um it could be emotional or, or it could be um spiritual it could be mental where you just are not in that old place in that old space you are in a new season you are in a new beginning and again isaiah 43 and 19 the lord says for behold i do a new thing and it springs forth suddenly do you not perceive it so sometimes my god and look we're seven minutes over see holy spirit you just be sometimes you not perceiving the new season sometimes you have been planted in your new season and because you do not perceive it you keep yourself kind of in that old season because you won't perceive the new season what is perceive perceive is do you not sense it do you not sense it can you not tell you know do you not see it like abraham had to walk on the land of canaan it had not yet been given to his descendants but god promised him it would be and god told him to go walk the land look at it you know breathe in the air like i'm i'm paraphrasing a little bit but he still had to prophetically he had to go and he had to perceive what god was promising him he had to see it you know, even though it had not physically happened, he had to perceive it. And sometimes, even though it don't look like, or maybe you're not exactly in that Canaan that God has promised you, but maybe you right there about to cross over the Jordan. And God is like, I put you in a new season already. Do you not perceive it? Can you not thank me where you are? Can you not worship me where you are? Can you not praise me where you are? Can you not, you know, shout 
where you are can you not perceive it this is what he's saying he is saying he needs you got to know you're in your new season right now because when you begin to shout about your new season then that's when the new season is going to come into alignment all uh, completely when you begin to rejoice when you begin to thank god when you begin to worship when you begin to just already know and walk like you're in your promised land that's when you're gonna see the manifestation because you have now perceived it god said but you're already there it don't you you're so caught up in looking by sight but he said walk by faith daughter walk by faith son stop looking by sight stop measuring it by your eyes and by your your natural senses of what you see measure by the spirit Spirit, says the Lord. Measure by the Spirit. Measure by what He's doing. What is He doing in the heavens? How is He working in the background? What is He doing on your behalf that you don't even know about? Who is He talking to right now? Who is He? Whose heart is He putting you on right now? What is He doing for you right now that you don't even perceive because you're so caught up in how you feel and what it look like and oh you embarrassed or oh you feel away or oh you're uncomfortable or oh you can't you know you don't like where you are and so bye so you not perceiving what god is doing and and sometimes god takes you back to what looks like an old place because he wants you to he wants you to renew relationships i know for me that's another thing you know i haven't had the greatest relationship you know with my mother because it's just been a lot of things over the years and one thing i felt i started feeling in my spirit is that the lord was saying he wanted me to begin to work on the relationship with my mother because the thing that i've desired the most is to have that mother-daughter relationship with my mother because I've never had it and I knew I needed to do a lot of you know forgiving and letting go of offenses and all of that right and now I'm in a position where I'm in her house because it was easy for me to avoid her because see that's when you know you haven't really forgiven somebody you can say you forgave somebody with your mouth but if you still avoiding people if you still dismissing people if you still blocking people then the odds are you might not have forgiven them. Now, I get protecting yourself because maybe that person hasn't changed, right? And again, that's between you and God. But a lot of times, at least I could say in my experience for me, I still really wasn't trying to like have no dealings for real. But I would say I forgave her. And so now I'm putting in a space that I don't have a choice because I don't like the relationship that we have. And it's on me because maybe she's not, she's not where I am spiritually, right? She's not there yet. So it's on me to be the one to extend the olive branch to, you know, try to get to that place of, you know, working out our relationship, getting reconciliation, restoration, right? Forgiveness. So we can truly go forth in our new season. Because do you think for one second that I don't want my, my own very own mother in my new season? My mother has not been in a lot of my seasons already. She has just been, because of the estranged relationship we have had, she has just been very absent from my life in a lot of seasons that I've been in. But there's no way that I want to walk into my new season without having my mother present. I, and number two, I need her to see the power of God. I need her to see it with her own eyes so she can believe. So sometimes God will send you back to start mending relationships with people, with siblings, with parents you know whatever because he is wanting them to see when he be when he fully blesses you when he fully you know you fully walk into that promise they'll be able to see and they'll be able to say that was nobody but god i want to know the god that you serve you know tell me what did you do you know and that's the open door that you get to minister and you get to extend the gospel of jesus christ and salvation to to your very own loved ones right and so there's so many reasons why god does what he does and it don't always align in what we think it should be it don't always look like how we think it should look it don't always feel like that don't mean you're not in your new beginning sis it don't just because you you feel like God's taking you backwards. I had a vision the other day because I felt like that too, and I do feel like that sometimes. Of when a person is you know have their um, their bow and they got their arrow and their bow and they have to pull it all the way back, right? So they're able to get 
that momentum and that velocity built up. So when they release that arrow, it has such a force behind it that like it hit its target. And it, I thought about that in my in my spirit. I seen that vision, and I'm like, a lot of it. That's what it's like with God. Some of us, He may have what looks like taking us back right may looks like taking us to an old place may looks like you know taking us back to an old person or a relationship or you know may look like we're you know he's you know taking us back in some way but god is really just getting prepared he's preparing you like he needs to build up that velocity he needs to build up that momentum so when he release you you're going to catapult right into that target right into that promise right into that breakthrough and it's you're not gonna miss and so you know be encouraged be encouraged and be at peace you are in your new season for some of you again excuse me know your times and seasons know what season you're in some people are just in the beginning and some are in the middle some are in the end some are in the new you really need to know i can't tell you that that is for you to go to the father Trust me, God is not, he does not want you to hear more about you through another person. It don't matter who they are. He wants to tell you about you. And so go to him and ask him if you don't know, if you're not sure. Um, but for those people who know, and you already have a um, check in your spirit is resonating with you. Like, you know, that this is something the Lord has kind of been telling you. And it's more confirmation. Cause again, if something I'm saying to you is very new, you never heard it before. Um, the Lord's never spoke that to you. You know, you never discerned that. It may not be for you because God don't speak through a person first. God speaks to you first, unless you just totally don't have an ear to hear and you're just ignoring, you know, and quenching the Holy Spirit. Um, God has really already told you where you are and where he's taking you. And um, just be, at, be at, at, at peace and rejoice and celebrate now. Those of us who are in our new um, beginnings, begin to celebrate, begin to rejoice, begin to worship, begin to praise, begin to shout because it is here. It won't be long now, oh God, it's Amos 9. Here we go. And it's so crazy because I'm going to end with this. I'm going to end with this. This past Saturday, I had a funeral, a memorial service. I had a, um, I had a memorial service, a repast, and a wedding to go to all Saturday, all in the same day. And I thought to myself, that's so crazy to have a funeral and a wedding to go to in the same day. And then I thought today about Ecclesiastes 3, where it says, it says there's a time and season for everything under the sun. There's a time to live and there's a time to die. When you are be entered into a marriage in enter into that covenant especially a god ordained covenant that is like a new life that's a new season for sure right and you know and and when a person is being laid to rest or when a person we're celebrating their life because they have gone on to glory or they transitioned you know that is that is a death right but it was interesting to have them together in the same day and just the different environments and the different emotions in each setting. But that just goes to show me that something in your life can die and something in your life can be and can come alive in the same at the same time. I hope you catch it. That goes to tell me that something can die in your life and it's not talking about a physical person. It's talking it it's, it could be, you know, again, it could be something that you've been battling with. It could be something that has been plaguing you, afflicting you. It could be, you know, a old relationship, a old way of thinking, an old job, or whatever. It could be anything, but something can die in your life. Can cease and something can begin to live at the same time in the same day in the same moment god is that good and so i hope that was for somebody but don't be caught off guard and don't be overtaken by what you see in your life that look like it's dying when that relationship look like it's dying when the opportunity look like it's dying when the deal look like it's dying you know when when the situation look like it's dying the friendship look like it's dying whatever it is right don't get caught off guard because something can still come alive in the same time that something is dying and so 
I just want you guys to be encouraged in whatever season that you are. You want to stay connected, stay seeking God. You want to continue to acknowledge him in all your ways. You want to continue to stay in your word, continue to stay in prayer. You want to fast. You want to do all, practice all of our spiritual um, tools in order to continue to sharpen yourself and to um, to continue to grow and mature spiritually, right? Um, because God, he wants us to come nigh. He wants us to draw nigh unto him so he can draw nigh unto us. So that is the way that you do that um if you by chance are not saved and you do not know jesus and you would like to know jesus romans 10 and 9 tells us if you confess with your mouth the lord jesus and believe in your heart that you know he's the son of god and he rose on the third day um he was crucified excuse me and he rose on the third day um then you will be saved i'm paraphrasing a little bit but really all you have to do is you know come into come to the lord and ask him right ask him into your heart ask jesus you can just say lord jesus i ask you into my heart i believe you are the son of god i believe you were crucified and you rose on the third day i be i believe that you are in heaven at the right hand of the father i receive you as my lord and savior i commit unto you my life and i ask that you will fill me with your precious holy spirit and so that i can be um, empowered with the power and the spirit of god and also you want to get baptized right baptism represents the new birth it represents the new man because old things Things have passed away and all things have become new when you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. But if you have um, repeated that um, and now you are saved and you are in the body of Christ, you should get connected to a local um, Bible teaching church and you should continue to go forth in your relationship, you know, get you a Bible if you don't have one, you know, and begin to read the word of God, begin to read in the gospels. You can particularly start in the gospel of John because that really talks about more about the life and ministry of Jesus and, um, and just you know, receive, you know, the revelation, ask God to reveal, you know, his mysteries to you, his truths to you, to help you to understand the word of God and just begin to, you know, cultivate that relationship with the father. But the only way to the father is through the son, Jesus Christ. There's no other way. So if you have received him today, congratulations. We are so excited to receive you into the family of the kingdom of heaven. All of heaven is rejoicing over every soul that is saved. And, and we rejoice with you. You're now our brother or our sister in Christ. And you please stay connected it um if you would like to you know i'm here to help you to walk with you you know to pray for you um if that's you so um now this video is 51 minutes long oh my gosh i said 30 minutes but see again god does you know the holy when you yield to holy spirit he just does he has his way and it's no better way than his way right sorry that the video is a little long but i i just really pray that there were some things that someone needed to hear and that or even that someone received jesus and so i'm so excited for everyone and i would love to hear from you again i always leave my um information in the description box you can connect with me if you need prayer if you have you know any questions concerns or if you want some coaching services i do relationship coaching purpose coaching and i do um well, really, I mainly do those things, right? Or, you know, personal development, right? Helping you really um, work through personal things that may be hindering you or, you know, keeping you um, held back. You know, a lot of times it'd be us, you know, and just unhealed, unresolved issues or wounds or, you know, things that we have not yet overcome. And you sometimes just need a little help. That's what a coach is here to do. I'm just here simply to help you um, to run the plays, right? I just help you change your mind while you change your life, right? I'm not here to, you know, to do anything other than to just uh, be alongside of you and to help give you that direction and to help give you the strategy maybe um, to get where it is that you desire to go. So if you would like to... Um, you know see if that would be a good fit for you please reach out to me we can set up a consultation and we can see you know if i can help you if it would be a good fit and we'll go from there so and i'm going to end this video but just remember your past does not define you it develops you and you are worthy